All right, uh, welcome everybody to our first uh, flip physics video. Uh, we have a real doozy for you on the first one. We're learning about the ever exciting uh, measurement and scientific notation. So you probably already have a sense um, that when we take measurements, there's lots of ways we can do it and lots of different units we could use. You could measure distance in miles or kilometers or inches or meters. But um, in physics, and science in general, we need to have some standard set of units that we're going to use. And so we're going to use the metric system base units. So you probably know this already, but if you are trying to measure length, uh, the base unit for that is going to be the meter. And the symbol we're going to use for that is just a lowercase m. Now, mass is actually a little bit more complicated. If you're trying to measure uh, mass in physics, the base unit is actually going to be the kilogram. Now that might be different if you were in, say, chemistry, where the base unit would be the gram. The symbol for kilograms, kg. Uh, for time, our base unit is going to be seconds, with a symbol s. Now speed, most people tend to think of speed in kilometers per hour or maybe miles per hour, but we're going to use meters per second. Which is m slash s. And for force, we're going to use a measurement, not pounds or not kilograms like some people might think, but we're going to use a, a force measurement called Newtons, which is capital N. And last but not least, for energy, we're going to use joules. Now, there are a few other units we'll learn throughout the year, but those are the base ones. And what you want to keep in mind is you always need to convert into base units before you do any sort of calculation. So if you know the distance to something in kilometers, well, we can't use that until we convert it into meters first. And so you'll probably also recall with the metric system, what makes it nice and simple is that everything varies by factors of 10. There are uh, 10 millimeters in a centimeter, and then 100 centimeters in a meter, and 1,000 meters in a kilometer, and so on. So this all comes down to our uh, prefixes. Um, the prefixes that you'll be expected to know are here on this list. There are many more of them, and if you want to memorize them, go ahead, but I won't expect you to. Um, let's start going in the, in the large direction. So if we want to talk about a large distance, we might talk in kilometers, and so we use the prefix kilo. And the symbol for that is K. Um, the uh, factor of a kilo, there are a thousand meters in a kilometer, so the factor is 1,000, or we could write that as 10 to the power of 3. That's 1 with three zeros afterwards. Now, mega is the next largest, and that's capital M, and that's going to be a million, or I could write that as 10 to the power of 6. Now, obviously, if there's no prefix, then there is no factor, or the factor, I guess, is just really 1. Um, for centi, uh, the symbol for centi is C, and the factor is 1 one hundredth. So there's uh, 1 centimeter is 1 hundredth of a meter, or written in, in scientific notation, that's 10 to the power of negative 2. Milli is lowercase m, and that's a factor of 1 one thousandth, which is 10 to the power of negative Three. And last but not least, micro, which is this funky kind of U, it's like a swooshy U symbol, uh, it's the Greek letter mu, uh, we'll learn more about it later, and the factor is one millionth, uh, which could be written as 10 to the negative 6. Now there's a few different ways to do metric conversions. Um, as far as this class is concerned, I'm going to show you just a simplified way that I like to do it. There are other ways to do it, and if you have some other method that works, by all means, um, feel free, go for it. Um, but what I like to do is to just say, look, if I've got, say, this problem right here, I need to figure out 165 millimeters, how many meters is that? The first thing I think about is, well, how, uh, how many millimeters are in a meter? Um, I happen to know that there's 1,000 millimeters in one meter, right? And I know that from my chart up here. So if there's 1,000 millimeters in a meter, then notice here how that means I'm going to have to shift this. I've got three zeros in 1,000. I'm going to have to shift my decimal place three places. Right now, my decimal place is right here, 100 165 with a decimal place there. I have to shift that decimal place three places because it's a thousand times. The question is simply, should I shift it to the left or to the right? And I just ask myself the question, well, um, is 165 millimeters, is that going to be a lot of uh, meters or is it going to be a little bit of meters? 
Now meters are way bigger than millimeters. So 165 millimeters is not gonna be very many meters at all. So I'm gonna shift this three places to the left so that I end up with a smaller number. And when I rewrite that, I'm gonna get, that's the same as 0 0.165, and now my units are meters, okay? Let's do another example. Uh, I'm gonna convert 380 centigrams to milligrams. Well, I know that there's 100 centimeters in a meter. I know that there's 1,000 millimeters in a meter. So there's probably 10 millimeters in one centimeter, or 10 milligrams in one centigram. So 10 milligrams in one centigram. Like I say, you have to do a little bit of figuring out so you know how, uh, how many um, places of 10 you're gonna move. Since there's only one uh, factor of 10 here, I only need to shift this decimal place. I've got 380 with my decimal place there. I need to shift this decimal place one spot. I'm gonna ask myself, should I end up with a bigger number or should I end up with a smaller number? Is 380 centigrams, is that a lot of milligrams or is it a little bit of milligrams? Well, milligrams are tiny, so I should end up with more. And so I'm gonna shift this one space to the right and I'm gonna fill in a zero. And so my answer would be 3,800 milligrams. Now I know this system isn't perfect and there's lots of examples of other ways to do it, um, but I find it's a fairly quick and straightforward um, method which will serve us just fine for this year. I do want to show one example of the more complicated method that I was talking about, and this might look uh, terrifying, but that's okay. Um, there is a shortcut that's going to come at the end of this, so um, let's take a look. Imagine I have to convert 24 meters per second into kilometers per hour. So meters per second into kilometers per hour. Um, I can't do that quite as easily because I have to convert both meters into kilometers and then seconds into hours. So off the top of my head, I can't think of just how many spaces I'm going to have to move. On top of that, seconds aren't really metric, so they don't follow that same factor of 10 rule that served us so well before. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off with my number here and I'm wondering, I want to know how many kilometers per hour is equal to 24 meters per second. So I'm going to set it up a little bit like a ratio. Okay, well the first thing I do is I'm gonna, I wanna get rid of this meters right here and I wanna know how many kilometers it is. So I'm gonna multiply this by something called a conversion factor and we'll talk about this more in class, but a conversion factor is just a ratio that has an actual value of one. So for example, there are a thousand meters in one kilometer. A thousand meters and one kilometer are the exact same thing. So if I multiply this by a ratio of one kilometer over 1,000 meters, I'm actually just multiplying by one. And multiplying by one doesn't change the value of our number in the first place. What it does do though, is it changes the units. So this meters here is gonna cancel out with this meters there. The meters on top of the denominator is gonna cancel out the meters on bottom. Now, if you were to notice what units I'm left off with, I've got kilometers on top and seconds on bottom. So that would actually uh, leave me in kilometers per second, which is interesting, but not really what we wanted in the first place. So I'm gonna keep on going with my conversion factors. I wanna get rid of seconds. Well, I know that there are 60 seconds in a minute, so I could multiply this by a factor of 60 seconds over one minute. And what would happen here is the seconds that's on the bottom of this denominator will cancel with the seconds on the top of that denominator. And so if I stopped right now, my units would be kilometers per minute. Again, interesting, but not very useful. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna multiply by another conversion factor. I know that there are 60 minutes in an hour. So I'll multiply by 60 minutes over one hour. And here we can see minutes are gonna cancel out. And then if I were to stop here, if you check your units, that's kilometers over hours that's kilometers per hour. That's what I was trying to get in the first place. Now, putting this all in my calculator, it's gonna take me a little while, but I get an answer of 86.4 kilometers per hour. Now, if you had to do that every time you wanted to convert between meters per second and kilometers an hour, that would be a ton of work. And so, as I mentioned, there is a shortcut that we can use for that. And the shortcut is just by looking at what we actually did. If you look at these factors, what do we do? Well, we multiply by 60, and we multiply by another 60, and then we divide it by 1,000. 
Well, 60 times 60 is 3,600. 3,600 divided by 1,000 is 3.6. And 3.6, my friends, is the magic number. If you need to convert between meters per second to kilometers an hour, you either multiply or divide by 3.6. So if you want to go into kilometers per hour, you're going to, um, you're going to multiply by 3.6. And if you want to go to meters per second, you're going to divide. Okay, let's take a quick look here at scientific notation. So scientific notation is useful when we have either really big numbers or really small numbers. And um, they become too cumbersome to write or to type into our calculators or whatever. And so the rules for scientific notation, you might remember, they're pretty straightforward. Every number has a decimal place, even if you don't write it. This number right here, 32 uh, million, has a decimal place right here at the end. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to move that decimal place so that there's only one leading digit in front. And I can count how many places I would need to move. So I'm going to move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I could write this with the decimal place 3.2. I could have the decimal place right there. Now, 3.2 is not the same as 32 million, and hopefully you recognize that, so I can't just leave it in that form. I need to tell you how many spaces I moved. And remember that every place value you move is a factor of 10. So I can multiply 3.2 times 10 and then tell you how many spaces I moved, which was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is 3.2 times 10 to the 7. The 10 is there because it's the place value we're going to move. The 7 is how many places we moved. And then I've only got one leading digit. And you can see this is a lot cleaner and a lot easier to work with. Now the same thing is true if we have really small numbers. So here I've got my decimal point zero 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 four three six. Um, I'm going to move that so there's only one leading digit. So I'm going to move it to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six spots. And I can write this as 4.36. Now 4.36, I need to tell you how many spaces I move. So I move it times 10. Now, I moved it six spaces, but this was a very tiny number to start with. So I'm not going to call it 10 to the 6. I'm going to call it 10 to the negative 6. And so the rules we're going to follow is, in scientific notation, you're going to move the leading decimals until only one leading digit remains in front. You're going to move the number of spaces. The number of spaces is going to become the exponent of your base 10. So 10 to the power. Now, if you move the decimal place to the left because it's a really big number, the exponent is positive. If you move the exponent to the right because it's a really small number, then the exponent is negative. So let's just do a few examples and see how this goes. So for this first one here, I've got my decimal place here. I'm going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is 5.5 5 times 10 to the 9. This number here is 780. I'm going to move one, two spaces. So that's 7.8 times 10 to the 2. Notice how I don't need to add those zeros. I could call it 7.80 times 10 to the 2, but I don't really have to. Um, this number here, I'm going to move one, two spaces to the right. So 9.1 times 10 to the negative 2. And here I have to move one, two, three, four, five, six spaces to the right. So 3.004 times 10 to the negative 6. Notice that I do need these zeros in the middle of that number. So I do have to write 3.00. I can't get rid of those zeros because they're going to help tell me where that 4 should go. It's going to tell me the place value of that 4. Now, if we need to write numbers going the other way into a regular notation, um, we're just going to do the opposite. So I'm going to start with my decimal place where it is. I need to move four spaces. I can see that from my exponent. And it's going to be a small number, so I'm going to move that decimal place back over to the left. So I'm going to move one, two, three, four spaces and fill in with zeros. So that would become 0 0.00055. For this next one here, 7.1 times 10 to 6, I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So I would get 7, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So I moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spaces. 1.0 times 10 to the 3, I'm going to move 1, 2, 3 spaces, and this becomes 1,000. All right, last thing we're going to look at really quickly here is just a reminder of how we can um, compute uh, when we have 
When we have the same base with different exponents, so what happens when we multiply it by um, numbers with the same base but different exponents? If I have 10 to the 3 and I multiply it by 10 to the 5, I'm going to do this long form the first time. So this is like 1,000 times 100,000. Well, 1,000 times 100,000, well, I could just kind of add up these zeros and I would get a 1 with these three zeros and those five zeros. So I would have a 1 with eight zeros after it. But a 1 with eight zeros after it, that's just the same as 10 to the 8. So whenever we have the same base and different exponents, we multiply them, we can just add the exponents together. So 10 to the negative 3 times 10 to the 5, negative 3 plus 5 is just 2. This just becomes 10 to the 2. Now what happens if we divide? 10 to the 3 divided by 10 to the 5, well, division is just the opposite of multiplication. And so instead of adding the exponents together, we're going to subtract them. So 10 to the 3 divided by 10 to the 5, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. This becomes 10 to the negative 2. Now last but not least, um, take a look at this one right here. I've got an exponent of an exponent, so 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. Now, just note a couple things. One, we could think of that as being 3 squared times 10 to the 8 squared. 3 squared is easy. That's just 9. But what happens when I have an exponent of an exponent? 10 to the 8 to the 2. That's not the same as multiplying. That means I have two sets of 10 to the 8. So I need to multiply those two exponents. So 10 to the 8 to the power of 2, 8 times 2 is 16. This becomes 9 to the power, or sorry, 10. 9 times 10 to the power of 16. Okay, that's it for our first lesson. Thanks for tuning in.